and they're off. Racing over the mile and a half, the full Oaks and Derby course and distance for this Dalbury Coronation Cup. And Point Lonsdale is just the early leader from west over with Hurricane Lane in the blue jacket, Tunez towards the outside in red sleeves, and Emily Upjohn is dropped in as they race round the first right hander going uphill, uphill for the first five furlongs plus. And it's Point Lonsdale and Tunez disputing it now. Uh, with Hurricane Lane angling across towards the inside running rail in the hands of William Buick. Westover, who was perspiring freely down at the start, back in fourth, and then Emily Upjohn. So getting across now towards the inside of the course with Outwide Tunes of Point Lonsdale and Hurricane Lane on the running rail. Followed by Westover and Emily Upjohn, and they are still climbing as they race on now towards the final mile or so. Hurricane Lane, maybe just about leading the past Irish Derby and St. Ledger winner on the inside of Point Lonsdale. Tunez is third out wide of Westover, and then two lengths last to Emily Upjohn. Just gradually turning left-handed as they reach just about the highest point on the race course and beginning the tumble down towards Tattenham Corner. Point Lonsdale shadowing Hurricane Lane. A length and a half back to Westover on the inside of Tunez and still waited with Frankie de Torre at the back on Emily Upjohn. Downhill now and racing towards the final five furlongs and just inside the five and on the way down to Tattenham Corner. Hurricane Lane, the inside of Point Lonsdale. There's just nothing between the pair of them. They go stride for stride, waiting in the wings behind them. Tunes on the outside, west over. We'll just need an out at some stage there on the inside and Emily up, John, as now they stretch on down the home street. Point Lonsdale serves up the challenge to Hurricane Lane. Here comes west over in third place. Tunes looks a little bit flat foot and Emily up, John, big Getting a charge down the outside, a dangerous looking charge, and Emily Upjohn has quickened up superbly to lead inside the two, and she's away from Westover. Then Point Lonsdale, Hurricane Lane, and Tunez, and racing down towards the final furlong is Emily Upjohn, so unlucky in the Oaks 12 months ago, stumbled at the start, making absolutely no mistake this time. This time in the Derby Coronation Cup, another Group One for Frankie de Tori. Beats off Westover in second. A long gap back to Point Lonsdale in third. Tunez and Hurricane Lane. Frankie Dottori has just won the Dalbury Coronation Cup on Emily Upjohn. Redemption for what happened yeah. in the course of distance last year in the Oaks. I must say, when I was in the stores, I was thinking, please don't sleep today. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little uh, feeling inside me, I remember last year, but... Uh, Everything went wrong in the King George. She was too free, didn't breathe. The key with her is uh, to get her to switch off. We kept the hood on her. After a long discussion, we thought, let's keep it on. She relaxed beautifully. And uh, she's a big girl, so I got her ready at the top of the hill. My God, did she quicken. Wow, that she was, was impressive. That was the most impressive. It wasn't yeah. the change of pace. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, she kept her right to the line. And myself and uh, Rod, we, we pulled well clear of the third. So. I, was, I thought it was a great performance. Does she feel better, a better filly than last year? She does feel better, she's stronger, but it's all in her, in her mind, you know. She, she was uh, fighting herself too much last year, and she's learning to relax a bit more, and when she does that, she's, uh, she's very good. There was a couple of times when she paused on the walkway, and she paused just before you galloped the post. Is that just her? Is that typical of her now? She does that in the mornings as well. Right, okay. <laughs> let her be, you know, we don't interfere with her. If she wants to stop and have a look, let her have a look. And how are you feeling about Soul Sister now? Good, yeah. I listen, uh, this was an encouraging tonic, and uh, roll on the oaks. Very much so. Well done. Emily Upjohn has just become the first filly to win the Coronation Cup since In the Groove in 1991. A few have tried as well. Her proud trainer is John Gosson alongside his son Thady, of course. Congratulations. That must have been very satisfying and you must be thrilled by the burst of speed that she showed. Yeah, she's always had that and uh, actually she hasn't shown it this spring. And that's probably why Frankie moved quite so early. And then in the end he said, I got there too soon. And she's looking around and in fairness, she, she's getting a little tired at the end. She wasn't absolutely fully. 100% because <clears throat> she's had a difficult spring, you know, with the weather being so cold and miserable and wet. And it, it run me through that because you had hoped to go to the Shima Classic with her, hadn't you? Yeah, we actually did a piece of, couple of pieces of work with her and she just wasn't there. And I, we knew we were doing the wrong thing, trying to run her in the end of March. So we backed right off, freshened her up and 
brought her back again and she's rewarded our common sense and patience. And when you backed off, was this the obvious race then to target her for? Yeah, we, we were thinking about a mile and a quarter, but we very much like to go a mile and a half. We could well go back to a mile and a quarter in a race like the Eclipse. I think that would suit her. There is the Hardwick at, at Royal Ascot, not too far away, but I think more likely the Eclipse. And is it the sort of long straight that you're thinking of that will suit her well? She likes a long straight and she likes meeting the... She won her maiden there by many lengths. She likes meeting the ground. Sandown is a very good track for her. And from your perspective, how has she changed from three to four? Well, she's always had a big frame, but she's furnished a little bit and not a lot. Uh, to that extent, she's, she's the same filly, but just slightly on a year. She's, she was pretty good at three, you know, and it, you know, it went all wrong in a King George. It went wrong for Westover. Take nothing from the winner. He watched all these people going at each other's throats, sat out the back pile driver and, and knocked us all to six, so uh, full marks to them. But it was a strange race, and she came back in the autumn and showed her class again. And this, of course, is, uh, it means that memories of the Oaks, when so many things went wrong as well, can be put behind her. Yeah, you know, it's, Epsom's not easy. You know, she got left that day and had to got forced very wide and beaten her nose. And that's life, but it's nice to come back. Yeah, look, Westover didn't have a perfect trip, but I take nothing from the winners of the Oaks and, and the Derby last year. They were both exceptionally brilliant uh, Colton fillies, so that's racing. Can I turn your mind to this year's Betfred Oaks and your very good fillies, the two fillies that you run in them. First of all, running Lion, immediately after she won the Pretty Polly, you and Asheen Murphy, what seemed to me, were kind of leaning towards the Prix de Diane. But you've come here and said, what was the thinking? Well, like I think with both Soul Sister and her, they are bred mile and a quarter fillies. They show the speed to be mile and a quarter fillies. And Aidan will test our stamina because obviously the Cheshire Oaks winner, the odds on favourite, will stay a mile and a half. Well, they'll go hard. So we'll need to stay. Um, maybe we should have held one of them for the Prix Diane, but I've been lucky going from the Oaks to the Prix Diane and won it twice, and it is 16 days. So if they don't stay, freshen them up home, we might still go to France. But it's the Oaks. You can't sort of say, I'm not sure if I'll stay. There's some way to find out is you actually run them a mile and a half, and uh, you can't rehearse that at home. Last question. Do you prefer one of them? Do you prefer Solstice? No, I, I think they're both lovely fillies. They've both got great speed. They'll both handle the quicker ground. It'll be even quicker tomorrow. And uh, no, I'd be very happy with both of them at this stage, and I think there won't be much between them. There might be something that's winning by five, but I can't do anything about that. <laughs> okay, well, very best of luck and congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.